بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اني اعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوه لا يستجاب لها امين يا رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ان شاء الله we will talk about uh, uh, just a second let me see yes so last time we covered uh we covered several uh topics one of them was the one of the ma major topic was yawm al hajj al akbar day of hajj al akbar that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed hajj and then he gave khutbah which uh, which is of uh, huge significance and uh, i have uh, uh, uh narrated or read uh, the text of khutbah last time the translation of the text of khutbah and i hope you, you all <clears throat> listen to it carefully and inshallah hopefully you will have time to uh to go onto the internet and find some authentic websites and find the text and and go through it it is very very important for every muslim on this planet <clears throat> not even to not not just for today but for the rest of the time till the Qiyamah, inshallah. So, uh, and you can also find it in my slides. Then we we talked about the year of delegation, which happened in 9 Hijri, when all the Muslim tribes uh, started sending their delegation after uh, after Mac after uh, the uh, Makkah. Just a second. Uh, sorry, I had a uh, walkie-talkie on. Okay, so the, the year of delegation, and then uh, there was Najran delegation, uh, where we talked about uh, from Yemen, there was a delegation that Prophet ﷺ met with them, and then we went on to the details. And then, of course, the last uh, Hajj. Then there was an uh, expedition to Palestine that Prophet Muhammad uh, uh, prepared in the command of Hazrat uh, uh, Zaid bin Haritha, and then it was stopped due to Prophet Sallallahu uh, death. But then it uh, continued after his death that Abu Bakr Siddiq uh, made sure that the expedition really went to Palestine because Prophet Sallallahu had started it. Now, uh, then we talked about in detail how, uh, how and when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. This was a serious, uh, uh, calamity for Muslims of Medina and the entire Muslim Muslims in Arabian Peninsula. But in essence, this was something that had to happen. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Quran that one day Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will also uh, pass away. And will you return to what you were doing, or will you steadfast on the teachings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So this is how Sahaba got the message and. Uh, uh, and uh, you know we have talked about that when his news of uh, uh, of his death came, then uh, then Muslims were not happy and they were they were just not ready to accept it. But uh, but that was the reality, and the life went on. And then we will study in the next sessions that how uh, the four Khulafa, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiAllahu Taala Anhu, Umar Farooq radiAllahu Taala Anhu, Usman Ghani, and Hazrat Ali radiAllahu Taala Anhu, Majma'in, they all. Uh, uh, provided the command and the leadership to Muslim Ummah for almost 30 years. And then after that, the time went on and then we will continue studying our history <clears throat> and we'll see how all these things progressed. Today is going to be a short class because the last part of, uh, uh, of Prophet Sallallahu life was, I have mentioned as we were studying the Seerah of Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I did mention several names of Ummahatul Mu'mineen or the mothers of Mu'mineen or the wives of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But uh, just to give you uh, a detailed view on who they were and at what time they were married to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then uh, in what order. So inshallah, we'll start with that. So uh, 
according to one narration, or actually according to two different narrations, some people uh, says that Prophet Muhammad had only 11 wives. But then if you, if you study the history, then you do find that there were two other wives who were basically slaves, uh, but uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, made nikah with them. And those two are not as, uh, uh, not, not, not men mentioned as much as the other 11. So inshallah, we'll study all 13 and then we will talk about uh, in question answer session. So, uh, so in, in order, there was a, uh, Ummul um Mu'mineen Sayyida Khadija bint Khuwailad radiyallahu ta'ala anha uh, Sayyida Sauda bint Zama'a radiyallahu ta'ala anha Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa Sayyida Hafsa bint Umar Sayyida Umm Habiba bint Abi Sufyan Sayyida Zainab bint Khuzayma Sayyida Umm Salma Sayyida Zainab bint Jahash Sayyida Jawariya bint Haris Sayyida Safiya bint Hay Sayyida Maymuna bint Harith Sayyida Maria Qibtiya uh, and then Sayyida Rihana bint Shama'un radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. Okay, so Hazrat Khatija, as we know, she was Prophet Sallallahu first wife and uh, Prophet was only four, 25 years of age when, when uh, he, he brought Hazrat Khatija in, in his nikah. Uh, she was 40 years old. Uh, she, was, uh, 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 she was older than Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi but she was well settled. She was a trader. Uh, by profession. <clears throat> and the way she met with Prophet was also during one of the trades when she hired Prophet Sallallahu through her agent to go to Syria and then come back. And this is how they got to know each other. And eventually uh, they got married. So they got married in 16, 695 AD. She was also known by the name of Tahira. Tahira means pak or pure. She was daughter of Khuwailid ibn Asad. Uh, he was one of the chiefs of uh, Quraysh. First, she was married to Abu, Abu Hala bin Banash Tamimi, then to Atiq bin Abid Mahzumi. So <clears throat> in her earlier life, she had already married two other people. And of course, this was before Islam, before Prophet uh, received revelation. So, <clears throat> so the Prophet was her third husband. But the, so then to Prophet uh, she got married. And then she died in 10th Nabawi. Nabawi basically means that year of Nabawa. So after 10 years of Nabuwa given to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu she died. And this was three years before Hijrah. So almost, uh, uh, so, so Makkah period is around 13 years and Medina period is around 10 years. So she uh, gave support to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi all her time during those, uh, during those 10 years, I mean, I mean before, uh, the, the, the revelation came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Khatija was always there for him in any way possible. So she died in uh, 10th Nabobi, three years before Hajara, and she is buried in Jannatul Ma'ala in Makkah. Jannatul Ma'ala is a graveyard in Makkah uh, where you can find a lot of other uh, Sahaba and Sahabiyat. And even today, uh, people who get lucky if you die in Makkah, uh, they are buried in Jannatul Ma'ala. And Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah SWT, my mother is also buried there because we used to live in uh, Makkah when she passed away and she is also buried there. May Allah forgive her soul, inshallah. Okay, then then the second is uh, Sayyida Sauda, meaning uh, Sauda uh, bint Zama'a Amiriya radiallahu anha. Prophet was 50 years of age when he got married with Safiya. And remember that during the life of Hazrat Khatija, Prophet never even thought of getting married to another woman because uh, Hazrat Khatija's role was uh, not only supportive, but she uh, she provided the the calm and the and the uh, you know whenever Prophet Muhammad received revelations and he came home. So uh, 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 Khatija was the one who uh, put a blanket on him and who assured him that you have never done anything wrong to, to people, then Allah will not uh, let you astray. Allah will help you. Allah will support you. And whatever revelations you're getting, whatever messages you're receiving must be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they must be haq. And she, she belonged to the tribe of Quraysh. She married Prophet ﷺ after her husband, Sukran bin Umru died. So she died during the rule of Umar bin al-Khattab. So she was still alive when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
passed away. And uh, there are many narrations, many ahadiths that are uh, narrated through her. So this was Sayyida Sauda bint Zama. Then Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. Uh, Prophet Muhammad was 50, 54 years of age and she was 17 years old. Now, by the way, <clears throat> the age of Hazrat Aisha has been debated in Islamic history. Many people say she was nine years old. Some say she was 11 years old and some say that she was 17 years old, but that's besides the point. However old she was, she was an adult Muslim and she was able to be married to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a as a adult. So uh, so she got married and she's the one uh, through which we we received so many ahadiths because she lived with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for a long, long time. And even after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, she was still uh, living and she participated in many efforts, many works, and uh, she kept teaching uh, Sahabiyat. And then we, we will study, inshallah, during the time of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu ta'ala and Mujma'in, that how she she was able to uh, uh, to to narrate a hadith uh, that uh, that were required for particular incidents. She came into Prophet's nikah before migration of Medina and moved with Prophet after first year of Hijrah. So uh, she was married to him before Hijrah, but then uh, moved in with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after, after first year of Hijrah. She died in 57 Hij Hijri. So you can tell that how, uh, how long she had lived even after when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. Among all the wives of Prophet, she was most knowledgeable and uh, and faqih so uh, faqih means that she was uh, she had knowledge of uh, masail she was she had knowledge of uh, different uh, times when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made decisions about certain uh, certain cases or uh, even even a small thing from from a very large thing to a small thing she he she was able to tell uh, the muslimin after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's death. Many, many hadiths are narrated by her, and we know that many of the hadiths that are quoted in uh, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim are from Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. Okay, then uh, we move to Hazrat Hafsa, Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyida Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu ta'ala anha. She was daughter of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was the second caliph of uh, Islam after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was 56 years old when she got when uh, she got married to Prophet. She was only 21 years old. They got married in third Hij third Hijri. She was daughter of Umar bin al-Khattab, as I mentioned, and uh, she also brought a lot of value to to not only uh, uh, the the lives of Sahabiyat, but also uh, as far as the narrations are concerned. Her husband, Hunais ibn Khazafa, died due to injuries in the Battle of uh, uh, Badr. Then she got married to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu most of his marriages were uh, in order to help some of the Sahabiyat and in order to support them after their husband had passed away. She died in 45 Hijri, she, she, so she also lived after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyida Umm Habiba bint Abi Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala anha. She was Abu Sufyan. And if you remember Abu Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala anha was the one who accepted Islam at the time of conquest of Makkah. And uh, uh, so Umm Habiba, uh, so Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married to his daughter. So he was father-in-law uh, of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also uh, through the through the tribe of Banu Umayyah because Abu Sufyan belonged to the tribe of Banu Umayyah. So they had also uh, some relationships in the, uh, in the second or third uh, gen uh, uh, generation of their ancestors. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was 59 years of age when he got married to Mehabiba. She was 36 years old. They got married in sixth Hijri. So the, the Medina state was already established. And then she got married to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as we mentioned, she was daughter of Prophet's aunt. Uh, this was the other relationship that uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had with, with Sayyida Umm Habiba. And the other is was that she was daughter of uh, Abu Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. She died in 44 Hijri, which is also uh, many years after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. 
Then we'll talk about Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyida Zainab bint Khuzayma radiallahu ta'ala anha. Uh, Prophet Sallallahu was 56 years of age. Uh, she was 30 years of age at the time of uh, their nikah. They got married in third Hijri. She married to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi after her husband Abdullah bin Jahash died in the Battle of Uhud. So see, so we are, we are seeing that some of the uh, Sahabiyat whose uh, husband died in Battle of Badr or Uhud, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam supported them and, uh, and made nikah to them to continue their support and continue the value they bring to Islam. She was known for her charity and generos generosity and was given a title of Umm Maskeen, like she was a uh, mother of uh, all the uh, fuqara or the people who were, uh, who were not... Uh, uh, wealthy as much as uh, uh, so that they could live a, uh, a happy life or, or uh, so so Umm Miskeen she was the one who was always helping very generously and that's why she received this title she died in third Hijri just after a few months of her marriage with Prophet Sallallahu so she is one of the uh, one of the wives of Prophet who died within the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she is buried in Jannatul Baqi. Now, just the way there is a graveyard in Jannatul Ma'ala in Makkah, there is another graveyard called Jannatul Baqi, which is very close and very and within the proximity of uh, Masjid al-Nabawi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, there are hadiths uh, that uh, talks about the importance of people who are buried in Jannatul Baqi. So she also received that honor. Then Umm Salma. Umm Salma is also one of the wives of Prophet uh, through which we receive a lot of uh, hadith, a lot of narrations. And Prophet Sallallahu was 57 years of age when, when they got married and Umm Salma was 26 years old. They got married in 5th Hijri. She was from the tribe of Banu Mahzum of Quraysh. And this is the same tribe that I believe, if I'm not wrong, uh, Abu Jahl also belonged to Banu Mahzum. But anyway, she was the, from that tribe of Quraysh and she was married to Abu Salma. Then after his death, Uhud, and death in Uhud, she got married to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi So this is another uh, Sahab, Sahabia uh, whose husband uh, got martyred in Uhud. So she got married to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She migrated to Habsha with her husband. If you remember, there were two uh, migrations to Habsha, to Abyssinia, or to, you can say, Eth Ethiopia or Eritrea, whatever these countries are called in today's time. But uh, she migrated uh, to Habsha with her husband during that time. And she died in 62 Hijri. So she also lived a very long life. And that's how she was able to give us a lot of uh, 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 information of uh, Prophet Sallallahu life. Then Umul Mu'mineen Sayyida Zainab bin Jahash radiallahu ta'ala anha. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was 58 years of age and she was 35 years of age. They got married in sixth Hijri. So now you can see that this is again closer to some of the other uh, nikah that Prophet had. She was daughter of Rubab ibn Jahash. She was married to Zaid bin Haritha first and then she married to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the divorce. Now, uh, I don't know if you remember the time when uh, Zaid bin Harissa, who was slave of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he made, uh, he announced him as a son. And then uh, he was told that, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, 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 so he could not be part of his, his uh, 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 inheritance. So then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just kept calling him Zayn bin Harissa because there was a time when people started calling him Zayn bin, Zayd bin Muhammad. So Zayd bin Harissa, uh, Zainab's uh, uh, Sahabi, Sahabiya Zainab got married to Zaid bin Haritha at the will of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, just to give you a historical perspective, <clears throat> she, belong, she also belonged to a very noble family within Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's family. And everyone thought that uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would marry uh, Sayyida Zainab bin Jahash. But uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose her for her slave. And of course, because of the status and the respect of Prophet uh, وسلم, they, they did not hesitate and they got married to each other. But this marriage did not work. And uh, Zaid bin Harsa was a slave and uh, the, uh, Sayyidah Zainab was, uh, was belonged to a very noble family. So this marriage did not work. And then uh, pro uh, at the permission of Prophet وسلم, uh, Zaid bin Harsa divorced her and then through Allah's uh, command and Allah's permission, then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married her. So she was the one of the wives of Prophet. Uh, uh, and two of her sisters-in-laws were also married to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, 
uh, two of uh, her sisters-in-laws were also married to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umm Habiba and Zainab bin the Hazima. So these were the uh, other two, uh, uh, they, they were sister-in-laws of Zainab, but they were also married to, and I think we have already talked about Umm Habiba, and we have also talked about uh, Zainab bin the Huzayma. She died during the rule of Umar bin al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So she also uh, is part of bringing a lot of good information and narrations uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, to us, to Muslims, after the death of, uh, after the death of uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then Umul Mu'minin Sayyida Javeria bin Tahrith radhiyallahu taala anha, uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was 50 years, 58 years of age. She was 25 years old. They got married in sixth Hijri. So there were three or four marriages that were done within six Hijri. She was daughter of chief of Banu Mustaliq tribe. So there was another Quraysh tribe called Banu Mustaliq. She was daughter of uh, the chief of Banu Mustaliq. She came to Prophet Sallallahu for help after she was brought to Medina as a prisoner. Uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi paid for her and offered her to marry, uh, to marry her. And then she died in 50 Hijri, which is also after the death of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, um, Umul Sayyida Safiya bin Tihai radiallahu anha. Uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was 59 years of age. Uh, she was 17 years old. This is also, this marriage was also done uh, in sixth Hijri. She was daughter of Hay bin Akhtab from Banu Nazir. She came to Medina as a prisoner after Khaybar because Banu Nazir was a Jew tribe. So uh, her father was of course belonged to the Jew tribe. But uh, when she was brought as a prisoner uh, after the war of Khaybar, then, uh, and her husband was killed during the war. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, married her and she died in 50 Hijri. Then Sayyida Maimuna bin Taharith radiallahu ta'ala anha. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was 60 years of age. This was very close to his passing away. And she was uh, 27 years old. This was done in seventh Hijri. So uh, she married Prophet Sallallahu after the death of her two husbands. So most of, uh, as you can see, most of Prophet Sallallahu wives were already married before. And either they had received uh, talaq from divorce from their husbands or their husbands had died. So the only, uh, the only uh, wife uh, who was uh, not married to any other person before Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. So uh, she died in 51 Hijri again after a long time uh, of uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's passing away. So she also brought a lot of ahadith to us. Then now these are the two last uh, uh, wives that, uh, that like I mentioned earlier, that some people consider them uh, and, and count them as Prophet's wives like the 12th and the 13th, and some do not. Now, Umul Mu'mineen Sayyida Maria Qipti, uh, uh, she got married to Prophet Sallallahu when he was 59 years of age, and she was 20 years of age. They got married in sixth Hijri. The king of Maqawqas gave her to Prophet Sallallahu as a slave. Uh, I believe Maqawqas was the king of Egypt, and uh, so he sent uh, the, the, her as a slave to Prophet Sallallahu and then Prophet Sallallahu uh, uh, got married with her, and, and this is the one of the other wives through which Prophet had uh, a son uh, named Ibrahim, and who died in infancy, and we have talked about it uh, in the early part of uh, Seerah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She died in 16th Hijri, she was, so she did not live for too long after Prophet's death, but uh, uh, she, around six, six years, she, she was there, so five or six years, see, she, she was there. Now, uh, now, the last one, the 13th one is Umul Mu'mineen, Hazrat Raihana bint Shama'un radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now, she is also one of the ones that uh, some uh, historians, some people do not count her as her wives because like the last one, Maria Qiptia was also a slave and uh, she was, Satar uh, Haina uh, bin the Shamoun was also in the same category. So Prophet Sallallahu was 59 years of age. She was born, she was from Banu Nazir or Banu Quraiza. This is, uh, this was also a uh, uh, Jew tribe. Uh, either from Banu Nazir or Banu Quraiza. Uh, when Jews, men of Banu Quraiza were killed, her first husband was one of them. So if you remember when uh, Jew tribe uh, uh, rebelled against Muslims and they broke the treaty, they broke the pact that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, and Jews had. So at that time, at the order of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, all the men were 
were killed in uh, that tribe and all the women were taken as a slave. So she was captured by Muslims and later Prophet ﷺ chose her for his marriage. She died right after Prophet ﷺ came back from Hajjatul Wida in 10th Hijri. So she was the other one, one of the other ones who died before Prophet ﷺ passing away. Prophet ﷺ led her Janazah prayer. She was one of Prophet ﷺ's three wives who died during his life. Sorry, there were not two, three of them. So this is the recollection or the very brief uh, information about the wives of Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. We have uh, uh, discussed these names during my talk, uh, uh, during this, the discussion of uh, Sira or the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But I just wanted to know uh, so that because when you, when you, uh, when when you talk about the Sira and other people have questions, so inshallah you will know if you, anyone asks you questions about Prophet Sallallahu's wives. Uh, this is of course a, a so major, I had a quick question. Oh, sorry, I had a quick question. Major part of inshallah we will have question answer right after okay. this. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So um, so inshallah ta'ala, we will have question answer session, but just bear with me maybe another couple of minutes. So uh, these were the wives of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, uh, as you know that when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, uh, there, was a, there was a little bit of a chaos because no one knew who is going to become the new caliph or who would continue right after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, so the, the, those are some stories that I will relate to you during our next week discussion. Then we will also talk about how uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, became caliph and what was the situation during those few days when uh, were right after Prophet Sallallahu's uh, death and right before Prof, uh, Hazrat uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, took charge as a first caliph and uh, so, so our next module will start next time I would really like all of you inshallah now that you have studied the entire history of Prophet Sallallahu's life now it's very very important that what happens after that it's a huge discussion. They were the, 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 the conquests that are done. The Persian Empire were completely conquered by Muslims. The Roman Empire were mostly conquered by Muslims. The Islam started uh, expanding. And then we will see that uh, by the end of uh, Khulafa Rashidin, after like 30 years, and then uh, there was a chaos, there was a civil war, and uh, there are a lot of controversial stories. So inshallah, we will try to find uh, uh, the, the balance and what historians have to say. But again, remember that whatever I talk about is also purely from historical perspective, because right after the death of Prophet Muhammad uh, the, 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 uh, the narrators of, of the, that time and the, and the Sahaba uh, and then the people who came after them narrate the story sometimes in a little bit of different way. And that's why we have controversies. But inshallah, our goal is not to get into controversy. Our goal is to find the truth and inshallah, see what is best for us to gain from this knowledge. So we'll take question answer session right after this. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.